day to all your listeners and viewers all over the world, especially the people of Bibini and Rian Subekwai. I have a file before me here, okay. and I believe that you can see this document. Okay. This is from the Registrar General's Department, and this is the name of the company. It's a uh, uh, University of Ghana America. The, University of Ghana America Center Company Limited, yeah. registered on the 10th of September 2015. And the object of the company is the management of the medical center of the University of Ghana. Okay. Could you kindly detach just this one so I could show it to a no viewer so we know exactly what we're talking about? Yeah. So basically, this is an authentic, you're saying that this is an authentic document well, from the registrar. Um, general's department. You are also from, you are also a media house. You can okay. do your own check so. to find out if what I'm saying is not correct. I obtained this from the Registrar General's department. Okay. And uh, if you go, if you open the second page, you see the list of directors. Hmm. That included the names that I mentioned yesterday. Okay. Uh, the object of the company, as I've said, was to come and manage the University of Ghana Medical Center. Mm. Something that was, to the best of my knowledge, financed and implemented by the Ministry of Health. How this team, and this is the list of directors there, yeah. you can mention it or show it on your set for everybody to see. It's okay, like so, so I'm going to very them. basically go through a few of the names here. It says the entity and the company. Then you have the first name, Ernest, last name, Aite, mm -hmm. as a position held being director mm -hmm. and with a TIN number. Aaron Nilante, Lawson, director. Ebenezer Ousu, director. Robert Joseph Metal Nunu, director. Ni Aye, director. Karen Ekumi Tano, director. Adrian Odoi. C director um, Francis Mensa, director Patrick Aye Kumi, director, with all their um, 10 numbers here. So the, the big question that comes up is that if the University of Ghana is claiming ownership and also claiming that they are going to manage it, mm. are these people synonymous with the University of Ghana? Because they, 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 this is a limited liability company. Yeah. The little knowledge I have in law tells me that this is a, privately, a private limited liability company. It has nothing to do with the University of Ghana. Yes, of course, at the time of registering, I do concede that some of them were part of the, were officers of the university. Mm. But one would have expected that they would have registered the business in, I mean, they would have been directors as representative of the various departments and uh, uh, institutions of the university and not in their private names. Mm. But this is, there's nothing showing that these people even work for the university at the time that they registered the business. So the million dollar question that is begging for, that are begging for answers is that, were they acting in the interest of the university and also in the interest of Ghana? Or mm. they were, I mean, there's an agreement for them to manage the, the, the facility on behalf of the university that we don't know. If there are things like that, they should bring them out for us to discuss. Okay. Now, um, a party that is of interest in this particular issue is uh, Mr. Rojo Meto Nunu. He is uh, mm -hmm. a former Deputy Health Minister. And uh, he joins us on the line. To, um, can you... Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to you and your cherished listeners. Okay. Now we have uh, the current um, Deputy Health Minister in the studios who has also given us uh, evidence, if so to speak, of uh, the alleged ownership or registration um, of members, uh, basically in the names of about seven, eight, with your name as well as uh, the um, ex-Vice um, Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Aite, there. And uh, can you tell us, from your point of view, are you a registered name? Is it registered in your name, the medical center? Well, to start with, um, the registration of the University of Ghana Medical Center Limited with our names as directors is correct. Mm. Okay. So Second, secondly, the deputy minister in the in the in the discussion has all the opportunity through his minister. They were properly briefed, handing over notes were made available. We made reference to a 2015 agreement between the Ministry of Health and the university, 
where ownership and management of the facility was handed over to the university for them to proceed with incorporating the entity. The mm. university council, therefore, directed the legal department of the University of Ghana to carry out the registration. Mm. And the substantive people you've named were the selection of the university council. We didn't just get up and incorporate the University of Ghana Medical Center. The legal department of the University of Ghana incorporated the entity, uh, Professor Enes Aite, the outgoing vice chancellor, was asked by the university council to head the board <coughs> because he had been championing the project until his exit as a vice chancellor. Who is more qualified than a very eminent economic professor who is also a former vice chancellor to help this institution to be established? Who is better placed than Mr. Aaron Lawson, Professor Aaron Lawson, a former provost of the College of Health Sciences and the current acting CEO to help the transition of creating a viable and world-class tertiary, quaternary teaching hospital? Professor Ayakumi is a member of the board in his capacity as the provost, the current provost of the College of Health Sciences. Okay. Uh, Mr. A A Dr. Adrian uh, Odoi is an outstanding practitioner. He runs Akai, Akai uh, Diagnostic Center, opposite the American Embassy in Cantonment. Uh, Mr. Aye, Dr. Aye is the uh, director of uh, Gapoa Medical Center. You have uh, Karen Akumi Tando, uh, an, an outstanding banker and uh, financial strategist, who was a former um, director of Ecobank in one of the ECOWAS countries. I mean, the basis for which the university appointed these directors was based on merit. Okay. And we are not owning the directorship in our personal capacity. We were all given appointment letters by the University of Ghana to act and to serve in that capacity. Mm. Okay, sir. Now, regarding the current impasse um, between government and the University of Ghana, would you say this comes at a time to validate some of the things that go government is saying? Well, I don't see how this validates anything the current government is saying. The current government had all the opportunity to read and understand agreements between the University of Ghana and the Ministry of Health. If they are proving to us today that the agreement entered into by the University of Ghana and the then Minister of Health for and on behalf of government is a fake document, then they have the basis. But the minister acting in his capacity as the minister Signed the agreement. He hmm. signed the agreement. You cannot wish that away. You cannot. Okay. Unless you go through the agreement, look at the various covenants for termination of that agreement, which clearly states that there has to be a review. And the review is based on certain benchmarks that each party is supposed to provide. The university has its role. The ministry acting for and on behalf of the government of Ghana was opposed to one secure the seed capital for the place to run, assist in getting the Ministry of Finance to approve the financial budget and operational cost of the place. We were asked by the then Minister of Finance, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Setepe, to produce a business and investment plan. And the University of Ghana Business School undertook that study and produced a business and investment plan for the next 15 years, mm. which showed how if the government of Ghana gave us a facility for the phase two, we would then be able to pay without the institution being a burden on the taxpayer for the recovery of the money owed under the loan. Okay. All of those things were done legitimately, very transparent. Okay, now, could you, could you kindly ha hang on for me? If you of the Ministry of Finance, they'll find the business plan that was presented 
as a justification for the phase two. Okay. I hear you saying that phase one has not been completed. That is not correct. Phase one was duly corrected and commissioned, and the president of the Republic of Ghana handed over the facility to the University of Ghana in line with the, that government's thinking that the best institution to run the facility was the first and premier medical school in Ghana that provides specialist doctors and specialist biomedical uh, practitioners, pharmacists, to Kolebu. Mr. Nunu, Mr. Nunu yes. thank you very much for your submission. Let, let, let's get back to... <laughs> Mr. You were, you were laughing when yes. he made some of the submissions. Yes. Uh, you don't agree with some of the things of he said. Of course, I cannot agree with some of the things he said. Okay. And let's even grant that under the previous government, that was the arrangement. Mm. A new government has taken over. And whatever a minister has done, okay. another minister can undo. The two ministers of education and minister of health mm. have come to an agreement that indeed the facility was put up by the Ministry of Health. Mm. All the four teaching hospitals we have in Ghana, to wit, uh, uh, Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Konfanochi, Tamale Teaching Hospital, Cape Coast Teaching Hospitals, are all under the o I mean, ownership and control of the Ministry of Health. Right. Why should the University of Ghana Medical Center be different? No. And no. if indeed, I don't know whether this falls under the transitional uh, provisions of the, uh, the transitional act, a new government has taken over. Me, I didn't know this, you, to be you, honest you, with you, stressing. until I had a copy of Good. this document. Yeah. Mm. How can we allow people who have retired from the university, people on the letter of appointment that he's claiming, I'm not privy to it, has not come to our notice, okay. that the university appointed them. So, so are you saying mm. that mm. the names that have been officially registered mm. on the company for mm. the medical center, mm. will, are you going to revoke them? Are you, what exactly are you going to do about it? Well, I cannot tell the next line of action mm. on air, but I believe that definitely something will be, because one would have expected, and if you look at all the public corporations, Representatives on the board are normally nominations from institutions. Okay, I, and if we want to get a private individual to be on there, mm. then if you have a clear mandate that you are being appointed on your merit as so so and so, maybe because of your experience and your expertise. Would, would you but say you government is, to, is, is government uh, uncomfortable with probably some of the names on this list? It's not about the names, it's about the principle. Okay. We at the Ministry of Health believe and we have evidence to do so. If I, there was time, I will take you through all this mm. uh, documentation. I have a big file before me here. That the hospital, the, the, the loan facility was procured by the Ministry of Health. The implementation, uh, uh, implementation unit was put together by the, uni uh, by the Ministry of Health. Mm. It was the, throughout the supervision was done. Every penny that went into that facility was borne by the, by the Ministry of Health. Okay. So One, where, the, where, hold our thoughts for a second. Let's get mm. onto the phone lines and mm. then wrap up with uh, Mr. Metal Nunu. Um, sir. Yes. Yeah. Um, last words before we, we leave. We leave you. Well, the, the Deputy Minister is not sufficiently informed. Mm. And I think if this is the posturing he's got, that is why they are misinforming cabinet and government on the way forward. Mm. You know, the what exactly is not is he not was informed about? Not by the Ministry of Health. It was signed by the Ministry of Finance. If he doesn't know procurement procedure, I'll teach him. Oh. The loan I think he can was do better. contracted by the government of <laughs> Ghana mm. through the Ministry of Finance. Okay. Oh. It was signed between Bank Hapwalin of Israel and the finance minister. The insurance cover on the loan was provided by Ashra of Israel. The ministry only signed the commercial agreement, which was between the ministry and the contractor for the EPC contractor to carry out the work. Mm. If okay. you read his handover notes properly, you would have known that a joint steering committee was created to manage and supervise the implementation of the project. Okay. With two chairpersons, mm. you had Professor NSIT as the vice chancellor, as one of the co-chairpersons, and the minister of uh, health was the other uh, co-chair. Okay. 
All right. The government of Ghana was expected to provide certain facilities, which it never did. And because the University of Ghana understood that they were the primary beneficiaries that will run the hospital for and on behalf of government, it provided money for the roads, it provided money for electricity, they provided money for water connection to the place. Okay. They provided facilities for internet access. They provided security. To date, the hospital is being secured by the University of Ghana. Mr. Nunu, thank you very much. And unfortunately, this 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 how no, far um, the time can take us. Now. Okay. Okay. So it. yes, and now, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Nunu. Um, Rohumeto Nunu is a former deputy health minister and also one of the names uh, uh, mentioned in regarding the registration of the University of Ghana Medical Center. Let's get back into the studio and wrap up with the deputy minister Kinsley Abwaji Jedu. Now you are still laughing when he was talking. Are you saying that he was lying? Well, I don't, he, he, there's some I don't want to descend into the gutter with him. He called, he, he called me all sorts of names. I'm ignorant. Yes, I may be as ignorant as anything. But to the, the documents don't lie. Okay. Documents, the other time there was at a, at a meeting, high-powered meeting somewhere, mm -hmm. a letter from the EDC written to the Ministry of Health and the government on the 8th of this month stated clearly that they have been taking care of the facility in terms of the security and other, other things that he's talking about. Okay. And that is what brought the Bruha. When they wrote that they want to now uh, uh, demobilize from the site, mm. and that they were calling on the ministry to take care of the security of the place. Okay. I don't want us to engage in some of this, but what is his interest? Okay. If you were appointed, let's, re let's move away from that. Let's, yes. let's move away. Finally, just before we go, does government have a blueprint, a plan as to exactly how the center is supposed to be managed? Very briefly. Definitely, we, we do have such a thing. Mm. But he says something to the fact that the, the project is complete. I can tell him for a fact, and then you can all go there and verify. You can okay. speak to the EDC. The project is not complete as we stand, okay. as things stand now, and all we right. need about six million dollars to operationalize the phase one before we can even think of developing the phase two. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, too. I've been speaking with uh, Mr. Kinsley Abwaji Jedu. He's a deputy health minister. And